Hello family, we thank God for today. We bless him for all he's done for us and all he continues to do. Today I carry on with the law of redemption and my focus is on what the God said to the people of Israel concerning an Israelite who becomes poor, that he sells himself to a stranger. I'm reading Leviticus chapter 25 from verse 47 to verse 55. It says, now, if the financial means of a stranger or temporary resident among you become sufficient and your fellow countryman becomes poor in comparison to him and sells himself to the stranger who is living among you or to the descendants of the stranger's family, then after he has sold, he shall have the right of redemption. One of his relatives may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or one of his blood relatives from his family may redeem him, or if he prospers, he may redeem himself. Then he or his redeemer shall calculate with the purchaser from the year when he, was, he sold himself to the purchaser to the year of Jubilee. And the original price of his sale shall be adjusted according to the number of years. The time he was with his owner shall be considered as that of a hired man. If there are still many years before the year of Jubilee, in proportion to them, he must refund to the purchaser part of the price of his sale for his redemption and release. And if only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, he shall so calculate it with him. He is to refund the proportionate amount for his release. Like a, a man hired year by year, he shall deal with him. He shall not rule over him with harshness in your sight. Even if he is not redeemed during these years and under these provisions, then he shall go free in the year of Jubilee, he and his children with him. For the children of Israel are my servants, my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This is the word that God gave to the people of Israel concerning one of the people of Israel who finds himself in financial difficulty to the point where he sells himself to a foreigner. In other words, to someone who is not of the commonwealth of Israel. God was given provision for that person to be able to redeem themselves. And even if they were not able to do so by a relative, God was saying to them that in that year of Jubilee, that Israelite person who had sold himself could go free. In contrast, even as I shared yesterday, if a foreigner sold themselves to an, a fellow Israelite, they were not able to go free in the year of Jubilee. They did not have a right to redemption. And so we shared, or I shared that God had even said that the Israelites could bequeath as an inheritance a slave that they owned. However, because God had a covenant relationship with the people of Israel, he made an exemption for them. What do we learn from this passage of scripture? I think that this law of redemption in many ways points to the fact that Jesus was going to come one day to redeem mankind all those who would believe that he was the son of God, that he had died and paid the penalty for the sin of all mankind, recognizing that his death was the perfect sacrifice and he was the perfect lamb. And so I believe that when God was giving them all these laws regarding redemption, he was basically for, um, foreshadowing what Jesus Christ will do for us, even when he came onto the face of this earth. So I want to quickly draw your attention to a couple of scriptures and the first scripture I want to read is in Galatians 5 1 it says for freedom Christ has set us free stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery in other words for us being sinners having been born in sin our sin was considered in many ways slavery and so God was saying to the people through this passage in Galatians that in Christ we have been set free from the slavery of sin. Also, 
John 8, 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Romans 8, 1-2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And then Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So unlike the stranger who could be sold into slavery and not have any right of redemption. We, though we're slaves to sin, have a right of redemption because of the finished work of Christ. So let us continually thank God for what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us. But let us know that we also have a responsibility to walk in that freedom with which Christ has set us free. How do we walk in that freedom with which Christ has set us free? By continually acknowledging him as Lord and Savior over our lives. By continually walking in his precepts, obeying his word, his instructions. By continually yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit. So the Bible tells us we are to present ourselves daily as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. When we do these things, we continually walk in the freedom with which Christ has set us free. And we continually um, walk or receive the blessings that comes by the redeeming work that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. Today, we're now going to go over our memory verse in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. We're personalizing it by saying, I have no other gods besides Jehovah. The Lord bless you and I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.